for one kid here. Kids, kids. And apparently someone does love me because someone found a stool for me. <laughs> okay, if you think you're a kid, come on. Come on. <laughs> Hi, guys. You can sit right here, okay?
He was a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Men hid their faces from him, and we esteemed him not. He was oppressed and afflicted. He had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. He poured out his very life, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for his, their transgressions. If pressed, we would have to admit that we want to look for the Messiah in a large city, where he could obtain the finest of everything, education, culture, possessions, power. The Messiah should come from an influential family and be groomed to be a leader. In Isaiah 9, we are told that to us a child is born, to us a son is given. We should look for one who will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And yet, we are asked to turn completely around and look for him in unlikely places, in the stable, laid in a manger, attended by farm animals visited by lowly shepherds. In another place in Isaiah, we hear he will be a descendant of Jesse. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. He will be wise and understanding. He will be powerful and know the fear and fear the Lord. He will not judge with his senses alone, his eyes and ears, but will judge the needy and the poor with righteousness and justice. He will wear righteousness and faithfulness as closely as his own clothing. His reign will be such that wolves will live with lambs, leopards will lie down with goats, calves and lions and yearlings will dwell together, cows will feed with bears, lions will eat straw like oxen, children will play safely with cobras and vipers. The whole earth will have the knowledge and be full of the knowledge of the Lord. And the child shall lead them. Oh, the goodness of the one for whom we search. He is wise, understanding, powerful, will judge with righteousness and justice and faithfulness. And all the earth will know God and live in peace. Surely the Messiah will be easy to find. But the one we see before us is so much like us, maybe too much like us. Many went out to hear John, called the Baptist, and this man, the one for whom we search, the one for whom we wait, came. And John lowered him into the water of the Jordan, and when he rose out of the water, some say the Spirit of God descended on him, gliding down like a dove. Others say they heard a loud rumbling like thunder, maybe the voice of God, but who knows? Some understood the voice and reported that they heard, You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. We are searching for the Messiah, and we think we know who to look for. But scripture leads us down so many different paths. We get a glimpse in Mark. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped, stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man. Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. We get another glimpse of this man in John. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, 
and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. Luke tells the story, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man along, along who, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face, face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. <clears throat> Another story in Mark says, Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and who could hardly talk, and they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, and he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Luke tells us, Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. The Gospel of John tells us, And Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. <coughs> For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And then from today's reading in Matthew, when John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who has come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the one who does not fall away on account of me. When we think we have found him, we are asked to turn around and look in another direction. When we think we see him, we find that he associates with poor people. When we have a glimpse, we find that the dead cannot stay dead in his presence. He seems so learned, and he does touch people, but not in the ways and in the places we expect. There he is, turning no one away. There he is, 
healing any and all who come. There he is, talking about God to all who will listen. There he is. Amen.